All right, guys, it's Monday live show. Trying to do them around 8 o'clock. Hopefully people sign in. I know we're a couple days out from the big December 25th Christmas rush. See if people sign in or not. I know everyone's going to be busy. We got Hugh, we got Craig, we got Louis, James, Pembroke Pines, Tennessee Mike. Some of these names I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Happy, yeah. Xmas Eve, huh? Desmond, Craig, greetings from the wet northern Florida. You guys are getting rain, I take it. Yeah, it's Monday. Hey, Dirk's in the uh, show here. Freedom van, wrapping presents, yep, having a drink. I think I pretty much got everything wrapped. Clayton's chiming in. Cesario? <laughs> Isn't that a movie? <laughs> I didn't say that right, I know, but... Craig from Atlanta is here. Yeah, I definitely uh, definitely wanted to do today's live show. What did I get you for Christmas? I don't know. Hey, Rob, Junior Johnson, Adrian, Michigan. Mr. Marcus, what up? So we got quite a few people chiming in. CCX dropping in from the UK. I do have a few packages, so we'll see how many people uh, sign in. Mr. Marcus, all the way from Australia. I'm supposed to have uh, an Australian micro brand here soon. Clayton, happy holidays to you and your family. Son, make it home from Snowy Houghton. Yes. The boy is here. I got my whole family together. Yep, he, him and I, uh, well, mostly him. I, I'd add a little help here and there, but he built a whole new gaming computer, so he's playing around with that still. Yeah, and then we got a ton planned tomorrow. I'll probably have to, uh, I'll probably bust out a couple of videos tomorrow morning. That way, because I won't, I'll be, I'll be busy all Christmas Eve. We go to a big family gathering pretty late on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, I'll probably sneak in, maybe give you guys a chat or something, just see how everyone's doing. But I'll probably bank a couple of videos. Hey, Doug. So, yep, hope everyone's doing good. I've been talking to plenty of people, been relaxing and getting some things done around the house. Even Homer's chiming in, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne. Alan says, I need to review a Panzera. I'm not familiar with that one. Juno, I've ordered the Casio G Steel and it's coming today. That's awesome. You got to be. James said you got to be getting a new watch for Christmas. Uh, probably not. Yeah, Freedom Van, I do. I have a drink once in a while. I typically don't drink beer. If I do, it has to be like, I don't know, a really good micro brand. Um, I'm sipping on some Elijah Craig. Um, so I typically like bourbons, they're a little sweeter, so. CC Hex is asking me, do you sell watches or collect them as a hobby? Um, I experience watches and, you know, part of, a lot of that happens just because of the channel. I mean, I was doing it before the channel. I was learning and experiencing the watches and that's that's part of the process. So that question gets asked a lot. So William's checking in from the uh, Marathon keys uh, let's see my facebook feed have been bombarded with their ads oh yeah a few Aussies here I'm trying to read you guys' comments i have a couple really cool watches to share of course you guys probably already checked out this um casio edifice i think this combination is really good so Freedom Van. No, 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 no. I would never sell the Orange Monster. I've sold many Orange Monsters, but I would never sell my Orange Monster. Let's 
yeah, there's my orange monster. That's a mainstay. Blue shirt, happy, um, happy, <laughs> happy, Merry Christmas. Yeah, evening there. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to keep up here. Yeah, Freedom Van, the orange monster is a staple in the collection. Thousand for the no, Billy Bob. I would turn that offer down. Yeah, the blue dial one that was that was stupid cheap. I think that one was under forty dollars or something like that. Would I? Uh, he was asking, would I sell one of my Casio men? No, I wouldn't. Um, I do have one out on loan to uh, a fellow viewer, and uh, maybe maybe they can be replicated somehow. We'll see. Because I know they're super hard to come by, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see if we can get something figured out. And I've been kind of lazy. I was going to go to, um, I was going to uh, go to the uh, printer. So I was going to try to work on some shirts or hoodies or hats or something like that. But uh, those are probably only going to be offered to like my patrons. So in case you guys don't know, I did officially push my Patreon uh, group thing. We only have 14 over there right now. So um, I'll probably do like a, a legitimate regular video and explain what my Patreon is, how much it costs, and what I intend to do with it. So um, I'll do that eventually. Uh, anyone ha have a good, great idea what is a good SARB 035 alternative? There's a bunch of different Seikos that are similar to that if you want or... The Liberty and checking in. Good evening, everyone. I'm assuming everybody, hopefully everyone's got some time off from work. At least a little bit of time. Sam, is it worth buying the new Alpinus? I'm going to say yes, if you want a Seiko Alpinus, because that new one's going to be pretty cool. I did see actual pictures of the white dial one and uh that one uh looks really good so Let's see yeah clayton's got a couple days off patrick ordered the white edifice for my length thanks i'm not sure how the amazon affiliate thing works but um Jim, you got to work tomorrow? Well, hopefully your day flies by for you, brother. 65 degrees in eastern Tennessee. It's actually been unseasonably warm here as well. <laughs> the Omega. Seamaster Aquaterra is a great alternative to the SARB. Um, what is my favorite citizen watch? Got some good... Uh, Good questions. Alternative to, or my favorite citizen watch would probably be my my digital uh, Hyper Aqualand. And yes, Floridian, I am drinking some Elijah Craig bourbon. So yeah, the Citizen NY0040 are um, really fun watches. I like those. I don't currently own one, but Pat checking in from Canada. We'll see. I don't know if we'll get 100 people in. I'm wearing the uh, smaller, it's kind of smudged up, the um, 42 millimeter Pro Track. I just did a video. I just put this video out today, actually. This thing wears really good. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this, but after seeing that I was able to capitalize on that really good um, uh, deal on Amazon Prime. I think I paid like two thirty six for it or something like that. Now they're over four hundred, so I'll probably hold on to it. It wears really good, it's super comfortable. Yeah, Florida and that that's a perfect match. That nice dark brown with the white stitching works great with pretty much any white dial watch. Kendall checking in. Mr. Marcus is drinking the uh, crack and spiced rum. That's that really dark stuff. I used to drink some of that. I can't drink rum straight, though, so and I like to drink the stuff straight. Cooper's asking if the Zin 556 worth dropping 1,000 used, if that's what you want, man. The Zins hold their value, that's for sure. 
I do have a few boxes to open. Um, actually, one's from you, Dane. I can probably do that one. You're going to like that glycine, Clayton. That's a... All right, I'm not going to open the envelope. I'm just going to do... I deal with so many watches. Um... Oh, dude, I don't think, we didn't even talk about this, did we? I don't remember even talking about this one. Maybe we did. <laughs> so Dane sent over this guy here. I don't know anything about it. I mean, I've seen a bunch of pics and some video of different colorways of this, but that's pretty wild. It's by direction. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. You want me to read the letter right now? There are only 300 of them made. It's called the Orange Bishop. I actually stuck this down, too. Alright, so I'm opening the letter that came to this watch. So, Dane wrote me a letter. Bishop, as in the Alien movie. I don't know that I really remember the Aliens movie that much. Uh, let's see, a 2014 Seiko Quartz. SCED029, quote the Orange Bishop. Bishop. Oh, it was for the Tic Tac stores in Japan. This number is 510300. 7A2A movement, or quartz 7T12, hard coated stainless, full kit, and it's only he's a typically they sell for over 400, and this one will be for 350. So I'll do a video on this, and then um, yeah, we'll do a video on it, and then it'll end up on one of the sales. Let's see if it's pretty wild. I like when they're already sized for me. So there it is. Pretty comfortable on wrist too. Yeah, that's interesting. And potential for absolute collector. You know, some of these Seikos just like skyrocket in value. So there, yeah, we got a couple of orange ones up there. <laughs> oh, you sized it for me. I appreciate it. Most of my friends have the same wrist size as I do. Do you think that was coincidence or on purpose? <laughs> All right, let's do... I ordered a watch that I've actually had many times, not in this particular colorway, but... Pete down in Bay City. I haven't spent a ton of time in Bay City, but I've been in Midland some. But here is the Casio World Timer. I did the silver one on bracelet before, and I hated the bracelet, so I figured I would try the black one on the strap. I think I'd like this one a lot more. Plus, I might try to mat it up, made, made it up with like a brown leather or something. But I love having the uh, world map on there. These things are only $20, so... This is probably going to be my top recommended. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Bacchus, yeah, you got to like interview your friends and be like, hold on, before we talk, like what size is your wrist? And be like, uh, yeah, no, that's that's not a good size for me, so can't really talk. Yeah, you must have seven and a quarter wrist to uh, be friends with me. So, no, this is um, this whole line of these really cool. Um, Casio World Times or whatever, like say you're just jonesing for a, um, a watch, but you, you don't have the money, it's bad timing, whatever like that, you guys, all of us can drop 20 bucks, right? You know, it might you might get your fix real quick, you know? So these things are crazy fun. Such a great watch for 20 bucks. 
All right. Uh, Nick wants to see a video on the SARX 063. If it ever crosses my path, I definitely will check it out. I have not seen one of those, so. I used, I used the knife that Dirk gifted me to open these boxes, and I have to say, I've had quite a few knives, not like crazy amount of knives that uh, a lot of guys have had, but this knife is pretty dang sharp. Like, um, very sharp. So it was nice using this to open up the boxes. Oh, let's see. I have a couple of awesome boxes to open up, but I was hoping more people would sign in. But I know it's it's the time of time of year. I mean, we've still got 74 people in or whatever like that, so we'll see. Yeah, it is it well it's the same brand. It's the same brand that uh Dirk just reviewed. Um similar, I think it's kind of the same model. I guess there's different versions of it though. Um Floridine's asked me to pull out a razor. You mean like a like a shaving razor? I don't have one down here. Uh, model number on the world timer. Yeah, hold on. There it is. I'll probably post up. I'll do, when I do my video, I'll post up an Amazon affiliate link. But if you guys are looking to get that watch purchase, you know, out of your system, you can go do it right now. You can pause this video and. AE-1200 WH. It's, I paid 20 bucks for it. I don't think the price has changed. It's only $20, so <laughs> it's pretty slick. Here, I'll even pop it on. Like I said, I tried the metal bracelet one. To... Uh, I don't know if Dirk's still in the comments. I'm not sure what blade steel that one has. Yeah, that. I wouldn't. I don't know, man. I'm going to try to find a really nice leather strap for it and custom fit it, but um, it's super light and comfortable even on the strap that it comes with. What make bracelet fits the Casio? I bought myself one for Christmas. Mm, are you talking about the blue square? Oh, so this has S35. Does it even say on there? Just says Steelcraft series. Sometimes they'll put it right on the base of the blade. Yeah, it's, it's super nice. Yeah, so did you, to put the leather strap on yours, did you just go with that width or did you see? I, I think I want to get a leather strap and um, notch it and cut it so it fits like this. So. I probably have one I can sacrifice, but because I, I want it to match that taper, you know what I mean? So I'm going to probably do that. Oh. So this one, you're looking for a strap for this one? Um, yeah, any, any 20 mil leather strap should work. I'll need, oh, for this one, you'll need curved spring bars? I didn't. On that one? I don't know. Curved spring bars. <laughs> Michael asks, how do you feel about analog digital watches? I'm currently looking at a G-Shock. Um, did you watch my state of the collection? I have, like, <laughs> insane amount of analog digital watches. I'm a big fan of them, actually. Oh, this will need sp curved spring bars? It's too tight, probably. I'll just bend them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I tried the full silver metal one. I didn't care for it. Thank you, Floridian. Somebody made a comment on my uh, leg lamp. It's a major award, you know. That was my must-have purchase when I went... Shopping with my wife at, um, I don't know, one of the department stores. 
I forget which one. All right, so I'm opening up another box here. And there's a card, so I better open the card first. Ready for the marathon on TBS. Yes. All day long. Yeah, the leg lamp was awesome. That was a $20 ornament at, um, dang, I can't remember what it's called. You, okay, so my good buddy Mimo, you know, Mimo's jewelry. He sent me a nice little care package here. He sent me a nice Christmas card with his family. Mimo's my buddy. And guess what Mimo did for me? Mimo gifted me a new Seiko. That's awesome. Mimo rocks, guys. So much better than that, that brown one I reviewed. So this is the 5KX. Really good bezel action. Looks like things kind of line up. Oh, look at that. You don't have that pesky screw down crown that everyone complains about either. This is the all blue one. I forget the part number. SRPD87. So I'll probably actually mod this. So hopefully I'll do like a sapphire crystal. Um, I'm going to definitely get the uh, crystal... Crystal Times uh, crown. It's a little bit oversized, has a triple gasket, all that good stuff. Um, this NATO that Seiko X came with is actually, it's a pretty nice feeling. So, but I'll be able to do different straps and I want to do some comparisons with the SKX. I should have some builds coming, but I mean, it looks pretty good right out of the gate. I like it. It's a nice blue. It's definitely more blue. A better looking blue than the uh, 009 if you're going after an actual blue. Because it has that little bit of a blue shimmer. It's uh, it's Mimo. M-I-M-O, just like you spelled it the first time. So, definitely has more wow factor. Billy Bob, thank you very much. Could you recommend a leather strap for the Alpinus? Well... Um, personally, there are some, there are some killer leather straps out and all, it all is going to depend on your budget, but I kind of like having something a little more one-off and that's where I did the EA leather goods. So you, you hit Eric up on Instagram and you tell him what you're looking for, what you want, and then he'll help you design it and then he'll make it exactly the way you want it. Um, and his straps are very high quality. I mean, this is the EA Leather Goods right here. So um, I have a couple of his straps and it is super, super nice. Not to say that there's not like other good leather straps out there. There certainly are a ton of great leather straps out there, but um, there's, there's an insane amount of really good leather straps out there. So I think to the point where I got overwhelmed and I'd already made contact with Eric before. So... Um, it just, it seemed like a good fit, you know, and I knew that, you know, it was, it's one guy that I'm talking to that is going to make that strap. There's a ton of really good handmade straps out there that are just mass produced and there's nothing wrong with those. Those are actually really good. What is it? The B and R, um, the few of those I've checked out, they seem pretty good priced and, uh, really good straps. So if you're just looking to go on a website and click and purchase, then there's tons of really good options. But if you want a little bit more than that, have a little bit of a connection, just like I like to have that connection with a lot of the watches that I like to experience with micro brands, it's, it's because it's more of that connection. So, hopefully that answers your question. We can talk more too about it if you want. I can even help you out with getting one. Color abs. I've tried a couple of them, honestly. I think there's better ones out there. I know that's 
probably going to catch some slack for saying that, but I wasn't super impressed with them like most people are. Heck, even that, um, what's that Canadian one that I checked out? Uh, where's it at? Was it Stra Strap Mill Canada? They're a little bit thicker, but that's another really good one. Good prices, good company to deal with. So this is another watch from Mimo. For this is just for the. This is not a gift. This is just for the channel to check out. Although I might end up buying it and not returning it, but high probability of that happening actually. So Mimo also sent over this guy here. This is the GSTB two hundred, and uh, straight up, I found this over at uh, Mimo's, and I just watched. Mark Goldberg's video on it because it's a little bit smaller of a watch and it's still the uh, carbon core guard thing. Is there something on the back? Yeah, this is a, and it's got the non-metal keeper. It's got the rubber keeper. Yeah, this thing's killer. I'll probably end up buying this off Mimo. Price tags on it is only 280 guys. And it has the Bluetooth. So it's going to be super accurate too. This thing's killer. I'm going to try it on. Yeah, those, uh, actually some of those leather straps that come on the Zelos, the Horween leather, are actually really nice. Yeah, I don't think Mimo's getting this back. I think I'm going to probably buy this off him. I need another G-Shock, right? Yeah, that thing's pretty killer. I'm digging it. I think Mark was 100% right. This one is the, what did I do with the tag? Threw it off to the side. This is the GSTB200. And if you go to Mimos, you tell them I sent you. I don't know what the discount code. You can try a few discount codes. Um, I know the G-Shocks don't have big discounts because they're um, the markup on them isn't that great, but you might be able to try like a Rob 20 or something like that. I don't know. This is a, if we measure the top part here, it's 46. Try to measure. Eh, somewhere between 44 and a half, 46, something like that. But the strap is really nice. It's a really nicely built watch. Lug to lug. 54. It's not small. It's, not, it's you know, it's not small like this Pro Track or anything. But, I mean, it's so good looking. And I think one of the things that Mark really liked about it, um, two things. It has the seconds hand, because a lot of these larger G-Shocks actually don't have a seconds hand on it. You know, like a, a three-handed version. Kevin checking in from New York. Um, and it also has a solar fuel gauge on it. So, so we can do a stopwatch. So you can see right there, that's pointing towards like the fuel gauge. It's kind of cool, empty to full. So it's just below half for its solar charge. I have to go through and set it up. It's, it's not on my time zone and stuff. But as soon as I connect it to the... Um, to my uh, phone or to my uh, G-Shock app, it'll it'll correct itself right away. So awesome, awesome watch. Thanks, Mimo, for sending that over. <laughs> you like that Borealis? That, that one's really good. So I have another really cool box now that we have over 100 people on. A lot of you guys probably didn't even know this watch was out. And there's probably going to be some haters on it too. But I, I did share this with my Patreon group. So all of my Patreon members already know that I got this watch in. So we can actually see it. 
So this is the Glycine Combat Sub with a date magnifier and a Pepsi bezel. So this was a, it's model GL0289. This is a drop, you know, it used to be mass drop, now it's called drop. Um, this was a drop exclusive watch. So excellent bezel action. I mean, it's gonna have all the standard stuff that we like on the Glycines, but. Oh man, the, the crowns on these are so good. This one magnifies pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm good with this one. Hands line up good. What is today, the 23rd? I think I'd leave it on there. What time is it? Somewhere in there. Alan's disappointed with his Costco combat sub. Um, it feels softer than the other ones. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like some of the other ones I had on there. Like, the, all the grip feels a little bit softer. I don't know. It's still a great watch. Same dimensions and everything. I'll have to unwrap it and everything. So, I'll do a full video on this and uh, and then my intention is that I'm going to do a watch tour with it with my Patreon members. So, meaning that everybody in my Patreon group will actually get a turn with the watch. So, that's my intention with it after I do the video. So, you can hit me up on that. Um, I don't remember what I paid. I'm like the worst when it comes to buying watches, guys. Because I'll buy them and then I, I forget what I paid. Uh, does it say on the receipt? Um, it doesn't say on the receipt. I don't know. It was like four or five hundred bucks. I think I don't think it was five hundred. Maybe it was like four. Somewhere in between four and five. I don't remember. Something like that. Oh. <sighs> Three ninety nine is that what it was? Uh, maybe it was plus shipping then or something. I don't know. So four hundred bucks. I think that's pretty good. I'll have to size it all up and everything. Does it have? Can't tell what kind of links it's got. Is that split pin? Hmm. Oh, looking on the case back too, it says special edition. Because it's a, a mass mass drop only or drop only. I it's just because it's all wrapped. I mean I'll I'll unwrap it. Because like I said, this one's gonna go. I'm gonna wear it for a little bit and then I'm gonna do my Patreon group is going to get a, a watch tour with it, so it'll get uh, sent around to everybody. I'm trying to unwrap this. Man, they really put some, they put a ton of wrap on this bracelet. An unnecessary amount of wrap on it. I guess they're afraid of it getting scratched. I think it has push pins in it. So yeah, there it is. It's it's a it's a thick bracelet. I, I must not have checked one out on bracelet. I don't remember. I mean that part's all stamped out, two micro adjust. I mean the bracelet's not the bracelet's definitely not a highlight. It feels a little sharp on the edges. I mean, the bracelet's okay, but 
There's definitely better bracelets out there. I mean, I'll have to size it up and everything, but it looks great on wrist. I, I like that they, they kind of went with like a maxi dial on it too. So nice big indices. Yeah, I think the bracelet does seem a little thick for how thin the watch is maybe. I don't know. But who knows. It'll work. Still a good looking watch. Kevin would take a SKX009 over the Glycine. Yeah. I mean, the Glycine will probably come and go. And the SKX is still around, so. The Glycines are still really cool. If someone's looking for a $400 or less, um really good automatic diver it's definitely one to consider it's got all of the boxes checked you know thin good size i mean unless you're looking for something smaller so there's three of those three of those ones so they're already see the people are already trying to make money on them that's ridiculous jim am i selling your seiko monster no 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 i am not selling my seiko monster Actually, there's only one of these watches up here that's actually technically for sale, and that's this one here. But I have three Seiko Monsters, so I have the Blue Coral, I have the Orange, and I have the Zamba. Yeah, 300 bucks for one of those Glycines is really good. Holy cow. Yeah, see, that's crazy, man. People are going to try to capitalize on those, because they do look good, and I can see where people are going to get attracted to them. But... Man, that's that's one thing that's kind of not super fun about the any hobby really is when people try to capitalize on it. Kevin's asking me about the Seiko MM200 Twilight. Um, all of the MM200s look really good. Flurried in when Rob sells the Seiko Monsters. Uh, no, it's you guys can you can always count on this thing. It's not going anywhere. So. I did sell a couple watches today, though. I don't think I have any other... I don't have any other crap to sell you guys. Or show you guys. Kevin asked me if I would get the new Alpinus for the, for the price. Yeah, if you're looking for... If you're looking for uh, one of the new Alpinus, you gotta pay the price. Is what it is, man. Uh, what did I sell today? I don't think I'm going to tell you what I sold today. <laughs> Take that. Tennessee's wearing the Jade Monster. Wear it as long as you can, and then when you're ready to get rid of it, let me know. There's the 5KX on my wrist. Man, I just, I want to like NATO so bad, I just can't get into them. People are buying these, man. These are, these work. <laughs> Mark wants to know what, what I sold. I'm not going to tell you guys. You guys will figure it out eventually. I'm going to throw some bracelet action on this. I think I have some SKX bracelets laying around. Tell us. No. Is there something? Okay. This is a pet peeve of mine here, guys. If you have a watch with a protective thing on the back, take it off. It doesn't belong there. It was there to protect it before you owned it. Now you own it. Take it off. No, I didn't. I didn't sell my. No squares have sold. Been sold. I gotta find a bracelet for this thing. All right. Well, that's a straight down the lane. So I have this bracelet. I have a 
stock Jubilee that's beat up. Oh, there we go. I'm putting this on there. I'm putting my razor on there. I absolutely love this bracelet. Okay. Everybody that sends me a watch with a sticker on the back, that's the first thing I do is I take it off. And usually because when you leave them on, they get like all grimed up and sticky and then it's a pain in the butt. And then I end up selling the watch cheaper than you wanted wanted me to because you made me mad. Okay. So Seiko used weird spring bars on the new 5KX. I do not like those. Those are gone. Shipping peanuts. Those will get returned to sender. Bruce and I were going back and forth with the whole shipping peanut thing. Um, don't enter into a back and forth with Bruce. He, he does not give up. He's like a little kid. All right. So... We're going to use a different spring bar on this. Let's see if we can get this bad boy to fit. That was a fail. Hmm. Doesn't like the fast spring bar. I don't think it likes the fast spring bar at all. So is the 5KX not like the fat spring bar? I don't think it likes the... It doesn't want to grab the, um, the spring bar in it. Hmm. Interesting. have other options. It'll grab these. It's still a fat spring bar, it's just a uh, different version, so. But with a lot of these bracelets, you have to use the fatter spring bar, so. But the one that, I don't know which one. I have so many of these spring bars laying around, I don't know which ones are which, so. These ones should work. Hopefully. Grabbed on the crown side, but not the other side. Oh, popped out. This thing's gonna kick my butt. Doesn't like this bracelet. This is an Uncle Seiko razor bracelet. And maybe someday I'll get it to work in here. Or maybe not. Doesn't want to go in there very good. I'm trying to manipulate it, guys. Bear with me. There, I don't usually have uh, bracelets kick my butt like this. Unless it's like a G-Shock. Duct tape it on. You think $89 is expensive? You might be in the wrong hobby, my friend. Okay. So I got it in there. 
No, I didn't. Always got to give it that little tug test, guys. All right, so let's try a different bracelet. <laughs> Weld it. <laughs> oh, I might have to. Well, let's try this. Let's try a factory bracelet. I got to find the end link for it, though. I'm looking through my uh, bracelet drawer here. to pull the whole drawer out. Oh, what this? Okay, here's the end link. So what end, or what spring bar should I try? Still try this one, I guess. Really surprised I couldn't get that Uncle Seiko one in there. But it might be the spring bar, or it might be the installer, or it might be. Oh, now I'm trying to put it in upside down. Wow, guys, I need to have another drink. Flip it over. Jeez, where were you like 20 seconds ago? Yeah, so there's a there must be a spring bar issue with these things. Well, that worked. Nope. Got to use a different spring bar, man. Holy scratch lugs. Good thing it's my watch. So you got to use See, these lugs are not going to work in this, though. Because they're going to, it's going to end up being way too sloppy. These spring bars are way too thin. So, yeah. Like, you could get it on there, but it is going to move around like crazy. You see what they did? a little bit smaller they really should have made the hole in the case a little bit bigger that that hole in the case is way too small like it just barely fits this tool not super happy about that if you look at So if you look at like a CT case or a, this is a 444 case, they're basically the same thing. You can see the size of the, look at the size of the holes. You can see it, right? You guys can see that. I don't know why they made the hole so dang small. It just complicates things. Oh man, I can't wait to do the video on this watch. <sighs> yeah, that, I was going to overlook a ton of stuff on that watch, but that's just dumb. I don't know why they would have done that. That's just silly. I'm not a fan of that. So basically, I got to do some hunting around for a spring bar. I don't know if I'll be able to find something that'll work, but. Because like reg regular even... 
Like even regular spring bars are just they're just not gonna work in it very good. Like maybe these will work. I could throw a blather on it, I guess. I'm trying to find the other half of it. I guess I could throw this strap mill can of the blue leather I got on there. Yeah, I can put this on there. So basically with them cheapening up the the watch, they which I I think one of the ISO certifications they had on it was actually um, something to do with spring bar and, and the way that retention is kept and everything. So these are smaller spring bars on there. So a nice blue strap mill can of the leather strap, 22 mil. I just, I can't do the, the NATO stuff, guys. I want to, but I just can't. So you gotta get special spring bars, I guess. So I'll just wear it on leather, I guess. I don't know. I'll find something. Not super happy about the spring bar thing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna point it out in the video. I mean, but most people maybe are gonna just wear it on NATO and it ain't gonna matter. You know, but if you're going to start throwing bracelets on there, then you have to, now you have to get a different um, spring bar and everything. I don't know. It just seems, it's kind of silly. I mean, it's cool because you got the, the hack and the hand wind and the, and the, all the different colorways to pick from and stuff. But it's a fashion watch, so. Quick discount sale now. No, I'm going to keep this because I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to rip into this thing. I'm going to do some vids on it. I'm going to see what parts fit. What, what parts cross over from this to, you know, the modified parts, and we're going to play with it. <laughs> Craig, right on, brother. Like, why? Why now? Like, you, you already have all of these spring bars for all of these uh, watches. Mark, I might actually do that. We'll see. Um, the hard part is, is getting it getting the you know perfectly straight and then chamfered and everything like that but because there's already a hole there i might be able to just open it up a little bit but i don't want to like damage the steel or anything either so dang you seiko there you know seiko is putting out some cool models uh next month though so i'm excited to see some of those but, um, yeah, wait. I don't know. I mean, once you get it on wrist, though, like, you kind of forget about it. Once you get it all situated, you know, get your stupid spring bars that you need and get your bracelet on there that you want, then it feels just like an SKX. Kevin's asking, what is Seiko coming out with? Well, they got all those, they have all those Alpinists coming out. Then they have, if I'm going to pour some whiskey, it's going to go in this glass. It is almost empty. Um, so they have the Alpinist coming out. They have the, like, Ninja Sumo. That's going to be really cool. I'll hopefully be getting some of these in. Um, and then the, yeah, the Turtles with the Sapphire. The new monster with the Save the Ocean dial. And I've talked to a couple of people that have very reliable sources that Seiko is adamant on all the new monster um, variants that they're going to be putting out are still going to have like that black or dark bezel on it. I don't know why they're not going to put out a, a regular um, clear stainless bezel on there. So there's some cool turtles coming out. And then there is, um, what is the other thing? Oh, the the sumo but in a chronograph so it'll be quartz obviously but um i think solar quartz actually but in a sumo chassis but in a chronograph 
So, um, as cool as that seems, I think that's going to be an absolute dud, personally. We'll see. Um, I think, for the most part, most of the new releases, other than that Waffle Dial Turtle, are pretty much going to be, I don't want to say duds, like, they'll sell them, but, um, I don't know. And maybe it's just me, but I feel like a lot of people are looking elsewhere. So, um, the Alpinus will do well, but as much as everyone's concerned, you know, we're not happy about the uh, elevated price structure of the new Cyclo Alpinus, um, they'll, they'll still sell well. I'll probably bring in that, the white dial one with the gray numbers, the gray indices. Yeah, and I'll probably bring in the Waffle Dial Turtle. William's saying they just released a green turtle and green samurai. I'll have to take a look and see what that green looks like. Because I am looking to do another turtle kill mod or something. But I also want to actually bring in an actual nice turtle, too, to have on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much with you on that, Celine Driver. I don't... I'm going to bring it in because I want to share it and I want to do the video so you guys can determine if you want it and stuff like that. But... For me to personally own one, no. I'd much rather have like my Hamilton or, um, you know, my G-Shocks or my Borealis or some really good micro brands. Yeah, Tennessee Mike, they're doing a, um, I don't know the model number, but they're doing a fourth gen um, Save the Ocean monster. I don't have a fourth gen. I would love to have a fourth gen monster, but they have to do it with a stainless bezel. I don't want the black bezel. I'm not doing that. And the date magnifier, the next one I bring in, I'll probably remove it the better way. I'm not going to do the heat thing. Oh man, I'm in love with that Hamilton. And Floridians liking the elastic straps over the NATOs. Yeah, they're crazy comfortable, that's for sure. I'm going to have to, I'm going to slowly probably shrink my collection back down a little bit. Oh man, yeah, there's no way I'm selling this. This is like everything I wanted the Khaki King to be. And as cool as that watch was, it just didn't have that wrist presence. This one has that pop. So, yeah, this thing's killer. three watch collection no because i like the affordable stuff so like i don't i could only do like a three watch collection if i was like into the um the higher end stuff and i'm just not into the higher end stuff the only high end or higher end watch it's not even high end um it's a 42 mil case probably a 50 lug to lug 48 um the only watch that is kind of expensive that I'm looking at, and it's probably going to be around $1,600, is the Titanium Oris Aquas um, in full titanium, the most current version. I might pick that up probably the first quarter of 2020. So the next step I'm actually going to be doing is purchasing a, um Apple iMac computer. So when I do these live streams, like I'll still do some like this, but I'm going to do, um, you know, where I'm on the camera and I'll have guests and stuff like that. So the Zen 104, uh, there's a, there's potential. I might pick one of those up again in 2020 as well. Fix it. Mike wants to send in a Hamilton. Yeah, the Oris lineup is the Oris lineup is killer right now. I, lo I just I love my titanium watches though too. So to have that, like in most of my tight, well, all of my titanium watches are quartz right now. So um, I need a titanium automatic, and I've done the Samurai. I, I think I want that Oris. Because it's definitely its own thing. Um, 
the Oris, um, so the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date, the only one of those that I would buy right now, and I'm actually following one on eBay, and I just, I don't have enough money to buy all this stuff right now, but the, the one I want, it, it was a 2018, um, No Shave November, so Movember, um, the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date, Movember 2018 edition. That is the absolute one that I want. Oris needs to be bought at the right price. Yeah. So MSRP is a little high, but you should be able to get um, a discount on them. Typically, you know, 15 to 25%, depending on what AD you're talking to. And then if you go gray market, you're probably going to save about 30 to 35%. Tennessee Mike, which pointer date do you have? Which model? Because that is a killer watch. I really like that one. Yeah, sometimes you can't pull 25% from the ADs on them, though. Sometimes the ADs are stuck on, like, maybe 15. And some of them, they won't even discount. Yeah, Zelos is going to continue to put out some crazy good models. I don't want to spend that much money on a bronze watch. Um, God, I forget what this is called. It's the Khaki Pilot Day Day Automatic or something like that. Or AKA the Cooper. So Tennessee Mike has the blue dial on bracelet. Ah, that one's really good too, but I, I like that Movember one because it has like a little bit of gilded to it. There's a good, there's a good chance I might actually purchase. I might actually even purchase that one before I buy the Oris Aquas. We'll see. There's, I'm gonna have to change up my collection a little bit, guys. Problem is, I don't really want to sell anything. So, so I'm excited about a lot of the micro brand stuff. Micro brands for 2020. You're gonna see some micro brands that are probably gonna drop out. You're gonna see some micro brands that are gonna push up. Um, and I think I like micro brands for the same reason a lot of times other people do. Um, it's, I think it's an opportunity, especially with certain brands, it's an opportunity to get into a brand that is potentially going to blow up or become, because they're only, if they're really successful, like Zelos is borderline not really even a micro brand at this point. So just like Christopher Ward was technically a micro brand or, you know, whatever terminology they used before they called them, them micro brands, you know, independent watchmaker or something like that. Um, all, all these brands start out that way. They start out as a conception. They're typically not like these huge investment co companies that formulate this brand and then push it out to market. It's usually like one to, you know, five people and, they start a business and they're all passionate about the brand in one shape or another. And then they grow the product and then it becomes not a micro brand. It becomes a mainstream brand. So, and for us to have that at the ground level to start off with, um, whether it be a Zelos or yeah, Manta, you know, um, Manta's definitely on that higher end thing, you know, um, and then, you know, Borealis, I mean, they've made so many watches. I, I think just their business, the way they, like, do the pre-orders and stuff like that, if they continue it that way, then they're always basically going to be a micro brand, and that's how a lot of them operate. But once you have your staple models and then you do, you then cycle through, but then you actually have inventory, then, so I think once Borealis does that and they transfer out of pre-order and then they go into stocking, then they're on that threshold as well, where they're borderline not really a micro brand. They're just then like a brand. So it's nice to be on that, that beginning stage of that company. That's why I like it. I really don't like these spring bars, guys. <sighs> Kevin, um, that's a, that's a tricky thing. So Kevin says, uh, I prefer micro brands that don't produce homage or clones. 
the problem with that is, is the the homage or clones they actually keep the lights on those models sell so like i don't want to pick on borealis but you can pick any whatever micro brand company that has been somewhat success uh in the in the watch market if you go back to their history i guarantee you they probably put out some sort of homage type watch whether it be a sub style or an omega style or whatever it was a popular homage style watch they produced and that got them the capital they needed to then venture into producing their own design and then sometimes their own design will actually be successful and sometimes it won't um, but the problem with that is um, it's a huge investment and then when they fail then you kind of got to fall back on what actually sells which is the homage stuff so we can all knock on it and stuff like that but the homage ones sell. I mean, look at it. There's a bunch of companies out there building homage watches to Seiko now. I mean, Seiko was already an affordable watch. And now you can get watches that are basically the same watch at half the price. So, it's pretty crazy, the whole thing. So, Or sometimes they oversell you and wait a year. What happened? Who, who did that? <laughs> All right, guys, I think I went over an hour. Uh, Ross started shipping, didn't he? I just see he posted up. He just started shipping. And you got to understand, that whole project, he went, he sold way more than he was prepared to sell. I mean, that's a topic I've covered before, so... Um, you, can't, you cannot be mad at that guy. If anything, you should feel sorry for that guy. Because I guarantee you that guy, from the time that project got overfunded, he might have celebrated that first night. But then as soon as he started making the phone calls to his suppliers and saying, hey, guess what, guys? We need this many watches. And they were probably like, hey, guess what? Yeah, we can't do that. So... Yeah, he, uh, he ran into some serious... Uh, barriers there that he had to overcome so I, I would not be mad at him at all yeah and and he still I, he, he sold those he undersold those watches so <sighs> and communication maybe seemed minimal but um you know, like I said, he was probably super busy with trying to get all that stuff sorted out. Let's see. And yeah, Jay, we can definitely um, talk about the L'Oreal, Laurier, Laurier, um, about the um, chronograph version they're going to be coming up. Oh, I, I took care of him. He's gone. I haven't had one of those guys in a while, so that was kind of fun. I can do it super quick right from my phone. It's actually pretty easy. So if somebody else wants to, maybe I should ban more people. That's kind of fun. I haven't had to ban anybody in a while. Occasionally I remove comments, but <laughs> I do need a moderator. That's what I should do. And that's the next part of my channel is I will be doing, probably pick one of my Patreons or something. Um... That's some more Elijah Craig. Billy Bob Dan. I'm not banning you. Nope. You gotta you gotta be a total butthead and then I can ban you. Fresh pour. So, um, yeah, stay hydrated. Um, yeah, I'm definitely interested in some more micro brands. I'll be checking them all out. So, and that'll be part of some of my Patreons when I get the iMac set up and get things situated in my room here. I will be doing um, some collabs with some of you guys. So, man, I really like this watch too. Sorry, guys, I got distracted. G-Shocks are awesome. 
Billy Bob's asking, so this crown doesn't do anything. Am I thinking about the mugs? Yeah, but only for a few people. I'll probably do a very, very, very small run. So, Kevin asked, will TGV be fired from Watchbox by year end? No, I don't think so. KD, hey Rob, what is your opinion on fake non-winner giveaways on watch channels? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I do have a giveaway going. I was doing the, uh, you know, the crystal press, and I contacted a guy, and I never heard back from him, so it's been long enough. I'm probably actually going to pick somebody else. And I've actually started watching some of TGV's videos again. Um, I'm totally cool with it. So I can do a giveaway on this. Who wants this? I got to finish building it. I need to put the bezel and the bezel insert on it and clean it up. But this will be a, uh, who wants to kill a turtle? This will be a perfect uh, one to uh, gut your turtle and slap it in here. You'll need a, probably the turtle case back to go with it because this one won't fit with the turtle swap movement. It will work with the NH movements, but it won't work with the um, Seiko drop-in movements. So. But yeah, this thing's almost done. A couple little things I have to do to it. Need to find a Falling Titan. He's paying attention. He'll take it. Well, Falling Titan, this is yours. So hit me up. I'll get this over to you. I just need to put the bezel and a bezel insert on it, but we can we can figure that out. So this is going to Falling Titan. Boom. Giveaway. Just happened. Yeah, I have some stock bezels, but um, and I might have some bezel inserts. We'll talk. Send me an email. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out what you want to do. <sighs> Pick up the Hamilton give it away now. Um, somebody else wants something? I can give something else away. What else can I give away? I mean, I guess the other guy didn't now give away the glycine. No, the glycine's going to be a tour. Um, B1 wants something. What else can we give away? Um, how about we give this away? All right. So we're going to give this away right now. We're going to do the blue Casio edifice. We're going to give this away. You ready? I'm thinking of a number... Hold on. It's going to be a number game. I'm thinking of a number. I'm going to give you a between. I'm thinking of, of a number between 0 and 20. No, no, no. In between 0 and 20. Not yet. Not yet. Some close. In between 0 and 20. Oh, you guys are... No one's got it yet. How are you guys not getting this? I think you've guessed almost every number. Not yet. Keep going. Oh my God. Do I need to tell you guys the number in between zero and 20? Wow, you guys are super bad at this game. <laughs> Use the force. Feel it. Wow. I quit. Billy Bob quits. You guys are... How has this not happened? There it is. Les, you just got it. It's number 18. Les Baker wins this guy. 
Good job, Les. This guy's yours. It's already sized for a seven and a quarter wrist. So Les, you'll have to email me. And you'll have to confirm it's you and stuff like that. Celine Driver, you did not type 18. I was watching. Let me scroll back. I'm scrolling back. I do not believe you. You did not type 18. You're so full of it. I just scrolled back. You didn't you never typed 18. I have all the comments. You never typed it. I just scrolled back. I didn't see it. Fake giveaway. Too much whiskey. I was looking at the comments. Maybe they don't match what you guys are. I'll give you something too. Don't worry about it. Well, I can't give everybody everything. <laughs> How did I didn't see any 18s, guys? Maybe it was commenting too fast. I don't even remember who said uh, that I <laughs> fake KD's calling fake giveaway. I'm not giving the Homer anything. He's already got everything. Maybe it was too fast. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, we'll see if anybody emails me on the stuff. We'll figure it out. I'll do more stuff soon, guys. There's a few. I didn't see it. Obi-Wan, no, I still don't have a uh, Manta. That's why I need a moderator when there's no rules. It's random. I just picked it at random. That's what it is. I picked the first random person at uh, Les Baker. Oh, now you, uh, you can't, Les, it can't be that easy. You find my email, you figure it out. Notice is doing some good stuff. Let's be civil. I'll be doing plenty of giveaways, guys. Most of my giveaways, honestly, are going to probably happen over my Patreon, though. But I'll continue to do them, too. Like, a lot of times when people send in watches and stuff like that, when I send them back, I'll send them a couple extra little things. So, William, no, I did have a Zealous. I actually gave it to Dirk. A lot of my, seriously guys, a lot of my giveaways are so behind the scenes that you guys never even know about it because I'm afraid of like rules and, you know, making people mad and stuff like that. So um, a lot of times I just like do it way on the sideline. You guys don't even know what's happening. So stuff just shows up at people's places because I have a lot of people's addresses, even though I ask for them all the time. Yeah, falling time I, or falling time. I, I definitely want to check out that no uh, crown guard. Billy Bob, you want my address? Sure, Jeff. Send me your address. Maybe something random will show up. Do I drink on the holidays? Um, yeah, occasionally. I pretty much drink bourbons, like, but I'm not like a collector. You know, like I see people with um, multiple bottles of alcohol and stuff like that. I typically will buy a bottle, usually in the $30 range, and I'll drink it to its demise, and then I'll move on to the next one. I don't have, like, a lot. So. New Alpin is coming. Yeah, for sure. I'll be probably bringing in one or two of those to show. Pelagos is awesome. Pappy Van Winkle. I have not tried that. Kevin, I have not tried that. Floridian, I only drink during live shows to put up with you guys. 
Yeah, maybe a little bit. Try Buffalo Trace. Yeah, I've had Buffalo Trace many times. Actually, the, the Eagle Rare that I prefer is actually a blend of, well, it's made by Buffalo Trace. So Buffalo Trace is actually a distillery, and they were making whiskey and bourbon for a ton of different um, companies long before they actually even put out their own brand of Buffalo Trace. So Eagle Rare is actually the brand or the, the version I prefer from that um, or that distillery. So, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm hopefully spring or summer. I'm hoping to do a bourbon tour down in uh, Kentucky. So, but before I do that, I'll probably actually. Oh, you guys know that there's a, um, uh, you know, the Worn and Wound Wind Up Show. I don't, maybe you guys don't know this, but um, you know they do the New York show and then they do a I forget where somewhere in California show, but uh, they officially announced a Chicago show for summer of 2020. So I will definitely be going to the Chicago Worn and Wound Wind Up Show. So that should happen summer of 2020. On top of that, I'll probably do um, I'll probably do a separate Chicago. Well, we'll see. Sometimes in my mind, I feel like I can do more than I can actually do. But yeah, I promise this time. Ah, uh, Celine Driver, when am I coming down to Florida? Um, you're in Florida, right? Um, well, I'm definitely going to. Florida Christmas of 2020, definitely. Um, Sarasota. I don't know how far away I'll be from there, but I, I don't think I'll be super far from there. Um, I mean, there's a chance I might take a quick weekend trip with the wife down to the Sarasota area this winter, maybe. Um, yeah, Bradenton, yeah. Well, I would probably, uh, if I did a weekend trip, I would probably fly into either Tampa or Sarasota, and then I would stay as close as I can get to at, you know, Siesta Key or um, Lido or uh, Anna Marie or something like that. I would be, I would try to stay right there somewhere. Yeah, I, I kind of know the area, and I, I like to, I, I know what I like in that area, so. Oh, shoot, dinner's on you? Okay, well, I'm kind of expensive. <laughs> I might take you up on that. Destin's okay, but, um, oh, yeah, uh, Clayton, definitely, I am going to Houghton this winter, so Winterfest is in February, but... It's always booked up in February in Houghton for Winterfest, and it's usually just a bunch of drunk college kids fumbling around over big ice sculptures. But so I'll probably go the week after Winterfest. So I do plan on driving over there to visit my son and check out all the massive snow slash ice sculptures that they build. So I'll be doing that in February. I have not been up there in the winter, so I'm excited to go. Yeah, I can't find anywhere to stay up there during the the Winterfest. So I'll go I'll do the week after. Um Houghton, Michigan is up in the basically kind of like the Keweenaw Peninsula of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So it's basically Canada. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a heads up for sure. If I head down to uh, Florida, I'll see. I'll probably need a break sometime in February or early March or something. We'll see. Yeah, I would like to do more traveling. Um, oh, the Chicago thing? Definitely, I'll be doing the Chicago thing soon. I'm not, I'm not going there probably anytime soon, but... Come springtime, I might come do a quick trip or something like that. There's some people down there I want to visit. And then I'll definitely be there for the wind-up show. 
because that's easier for me to get to Chicago whether I drive or fly. It's really not that far of a drive for me, six hours or something like that. So I'll probably drive to Chicago. Yeah, I don't, uh, Obi-Wan, I don't get too many um, Christopher Wards on the show. I would definitely like to have more, but <laughs> William rubbing it in. 72 with a cold front. Uh, Floridian talking about the Astern Banks. Yeah, I would like to check out those guys. I need to talk to them. Uh, maybe I'll, after the holidays, maybe I'll send them an email. All right, guys, I, I went kind of long on this one. I'm going to go clock out. So I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. It was a good live show. Appreciate it. And I will drop a video tomorrow sometime. And then I'll probably have one uh, for Christmas Day as well, too. Because, you know, I'm doing the um, video every day. So, but hopefully you guys send me the email. Sorry about the little mix up there with the 18. Maybe we'll do another giveaway on the next live or something. So we'll figure something out. Appreciate you guys chiming in. I'll catch you on the uh, tomorrow's vid.